G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be having a look at the Spitfire F Mark 9C. This plane is a rare event plane that you got from a deathmatch tournament back in 2016. And uh, basically, if you killed, I think it was like 40 people, then you got this uh, plane. For me, this was one of the most stressful event planes to acquire. It just took way too much energy. Uh, was it worth it in the end? Probably not, but at the end of the day, we have ourselves a rare Spitfire, and to be honest, nothing really beats a rare Spitfire. So, was it worth the pain? Well, we'll have to kind of watch and see. Recently, the Hispano Cannons were given a bit of a buff, so I did want to try them out and uh, give it a little bit of a whirl. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure if they are buffed or if it's just the way that I'm playing that makes them a little bit powerful, but the Hispanos do lack a couple of very specific things. The Hispanos, first off, are very low in capacity. They only have about 120 rounds between each gun, which you might think is a lot, but then when you realize that the rate of fire is fairly high, it does tend to drop off your ability to get multiple kills in a single game, and you'll see this with the particular matches that I've decided to show you guys today. So, the Spitfire Mark 9C is essentially just a Mark 9 Spitfire with four 20mm cannons, giving it a fair bit of firepower, but of course, at the cost of ammunition capacity and a little bit of weight. The 9C is a little bit heavier than the F Mark 9, and despite it sitting at 4.7 as opposed to the F Mark 9 at 4.3, uh, is a little bit of a sort of side grade, if you will because you are trading that firepower for a fair bit of performance. This plane does feel remarkably heavier than the F Mark 9, and is, uh, you know, kind of trading that, which is, for me, a little bit of a shame. But I will work with this plane at 4.7, and to be honest, it's really not the end of the world. We're going to skip forward a little bit here, and I'm going to kind of show you how I play this thing. This is one of the planes where I try and jockey for altitude. I try and get above my opponents, but I also have to remember that you are a, a turn fighter. So if you're going to be turn fighting your opponents, you need to have altitude because this particular plane does not uh, fly very fast and its energy retention in turns, dives, and uh, climbs isn't exactly the best. It doesn't quite keep its speed as uh, maybe a Focke Wolf 190 is. We're going to go head on with this 190 here, spraying only a little bit. We're not going to be using a lot of ammunition in the head on. I'm going to pull away first, and then I'm going to go up. If I were to pull away and circle back around like I would for any other fighter, I would find myself in a situation where I have uh, basically completed a turn in front of my opponent and given them an easier shot. So whilst I have nosed over, I am noticing this BF109 here is kind of close. But I have to keep in mind the opponents that are at my altitude. I can't just dive after the first target I see. I have to prioritize the targets that are at higher altitude. And now that the Focke Wolf 190A has decided to turn in front of me, I think that this is my time to strike. Now, I have noticed some shots behind me, so I'm going to get a quick crit. And it seems like there's a BF 109K behind me who is closing quite fast. I can use my turning ability to turn away. I am trying to turn in a couple of directions. And I have a D12 who has joined the fray from I don't really know where. Because the D12 is at low speed and we are a turn fighter, we can pretty much just sit on this guy's ass, provided that we have the speed to deal with him. Now, I have put myself in a bit of a shitty situation here. I am below a BF109 K4, and the K4 has very good energy retention and energy fighting capabilities. So what I need to do is I need to force this guy into bleeding his energy by committing to a turn, and that's kind of what's happened here. He's gone for a, a little bit of a turn, and he has wasted himself in front of me, putting himself in a really bad situation, less than 400 meters away, and this critical hit here and a bit of spraying is probably going to be the stuff that puts him down. I put my flaps out just for that little bit of extra... Oh, no, I don't put my flaps out. I look for a bit more... Um, a little bit more speed and it was actually a wise decision now I decide to rip my flaps out and uh, come for I guess the the turning capabilities and you want to you want to basically take that as your little ace in the ace in the hat or your little rabbit up the sleeve if you will 
you don't want to be wasting your opportunities with your with your turn fighting. You have to sort of be a little bit conservative because you have limited speed and altitude. You don't get it back as easily when you're in a dogfight like this. The BF 109K plummets to the ground and dies in a big fireball. The Focke Wolf 190 is about to join him soon, and the BF 109G here has made himself a very easy target for me. So I'm going to go and finish him off while the A7 doesn't have that opportunity. This is a plane that does not have that opportunity to command the battlefield. And so what you need to do is you need to work with your team or try and bait opponents in one versus ones. You can't just energy fight anyone, whoever you want. You have to actually pick your fights in this plane. You can't just sort of have a good old time and do whatever the hell you want, which is, I guess, a bit of a running theme among War Thunder planes. You can't do whatever you want because this plane just does not have the energy retention. It might sound kind of strange because this plane is extremely light, but you have to remember that being light means that it can turn on a dime and when you constantly change your direction at a sort of level that is so severe, you bleed a lot of speed in those turns. You sacrifice a lot. There are no sort of winner takes all things. There are always trade-offs in this situation and the trade-off here is energy retention in a turn. One of the things that a lot of people, when they're in turn fighters, fail to do is they fail to keep their speed and they end up energy trapped or they end up so slow that they just cannot get away from their opponents in a sort of even horizontal dogfight. So these kinds of dogfights, you have to be very careful about. You have to make sure that you are paying attention to what you're doing. So we're going to move on to the next match here and this is kind of going to show you uh, a little bit more of that type of dogfighting style. The Spitfire is one of those planes where you actually, believe it or not, have to play a little bit conservative. I would say that the planes that you can play aggressively in are things like the BF-109G, the uh, XP-50, even to some extent the P-63. You have to, however, in the Spitfire, be very wary that you are the plane at the highest altitude. The moment you're in a two versus one, it is practically game over because you're just going to lose so much speed and so much at so much altitude. If someone knows what they're doing, they are just going to cream you and there's nothing that you can do. You have to stay above your opponents and you have to be that one to force your enemies down to the deck. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do in this match here. I'm climbing at about uh, 280 to 250 kilometers an hour. That's kind of where I want to be climbing because at that sort of altitude and that speed, uh, I can engage opponents with a little bit of speed and use that to convert it into altitude, which can then be used to force your opponents down to the deck when they decide to go for a low speed fight. A little bit of spray here, going for some hits, again trying the same tactic that I did early on. The uh, original BF-109F decides that I am not quite as juicy enough target to commit to a head-on, and so I decide to continue with a bit of speed, but this is really not working for the F Mark 9 c The BF-109 is just closing and uh, is only just starting to get away, but I'm pretty sure that is not going to last very long. I'm starting to run out of options, and I think at this point the best option is to just try and engage in a dogfight. I am alone here in a 2 versus 1, and this is really, really suboptimal for me. So what I want to do here is try and get my opponents to bleed as much energy as possible, and if the BF-109F commits to me, then I can deal with the G2 very easily. And the BF-109F looks like he is going to commit, and the G2 also looks like he's going to commit. So I have to make sure that I stay out of the way of that G2, all oh, barely missing those shots, and going up into the vertical again, turning that altitude into, uh, sorry, that speed into a little bit of altitude and forcing my opponents to do the same with me. This BF-109F has uh, seemingly ripped a flap and has put himself in that sort of slow speed, which allows me to get a little bit of a snapshot onto him and now put this battle into a one versus one. The BF-109 is starting to dive around me and is doing this weird sort of spirally thing, which allows me to cut in on the inside, get myself maybe a critical hit, no, just a little hit, and uh, maybe try and finish him off. I see another BF-109 coming in really, really close, so I need to either commit to this guy get him killed now, and I set him on fire with a lucky, lucky shot here. I have to spray a little bit. I can't afford to uh, really sort of be conservative here. I needed to get that BF-109 out of the match and deal with the upcoming threats here. We have ourselves a uh, BF-109 and uh, a P-47, so these guys are very dangerous targets. And of course, the allies that were with me decide that a 
dead or damaged plane is a better target than uh, some two real threats and unfortunately uh, my teammates kind of abandoned me in this situation and leave me with no other option but to go into a turn fight with this BF109 G2. Now the G2 has a lot more energy than me so what I'm going to try and do is go above him which will give him the false sense of, of, uh, of danger and allow me to get on top of him and to force him down. Now my teammates have all decided that dying is the best option, and so now I'm left in a 1 versus 4. This 1 versus 4 is soon to be a 1 versus 3 because the P47 here doesn't really see me until the last minute, but unfortunately my shots are just not ringing home. My ammunition is not being made where it, uh, or not hitting where it counts, and unfortunately for me, I am starting to run out of time very, very rapidly. The P47 is pretty much a dead man, but I need to get these shots on, and he's being a little bit funny here, and I'm not quite making the lead. I insist on going with stealth because uh, it's just me, and I'm being pathetic, but that has put me in a really shit situation because I've focused so much on the P47 that I've now got the BF109 spraying right behind me, and I'm low on ammunition, I'm low on uh, friendlies, and I'm low on energy. This has put me in a really, really bad situation. I'm cooking my engine here, and I'm just desperately, desperately trying to get away from these guys and maybe go back to my airfield where I've got a friendly and where I can rearm and repair. And maybe cower behind the AA like a little bitch, but um, at the end of the day, if this is the situation that I've put myself in, sh you know, maybe there's some debate to be had there. Maybe I am doing the right thing, maybe I'm not. But at the end of the day, this is the kind of thing that I did, and whether it works out or not is uh, sort of a matter for the rest of the video. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments below. Is it the right thing to do? Is it a cowardly thing? Is it, is it just me being a little bitch? Or in this situation, is it justified? Because it's quite literally a 1 versus 5 or a 2 versus 5 in this situation. This BF109G really, really wants my booty, so what I'm trying to do is lure him in nice and close and then pull severe maneuvers, but unfortunately it's just not working for me because I'm too slow and I don't have the altitude, I don't have the energy, and now I've taken so many beatings that I'm missing an elevator and uh, it's really, really looking desperate for me. I've put myself in a shit situation here, so I need to just book it for the airfield and hope to God that the AA does something or at least a teammate does something. This XP-50 could be coming down and giving me a hand, maybe. Uh, the P-47D that I critted earlier decides he wants to go down, and uh, maybe I can support this P-47D here by distracting the LA-5, thinking that I've got ammo, which uh, could potentially work. Now, most of the enemies decide that it is a wiser choice to abandon this uh, sort of fiasco. Unfortunately, the LA-5 full commits to the P-47 and smokes him, but uh, the LA-5 then books out. So, there are three enemies left to uh, go for the Airfield AA, and the Airfield AA is actually hard at work damaging these guys. It's actually doing what it's sort of supposed to do, but uh, at the end of the day, maybe there should be a timer on it to limit its effectiveness in that respect. Uh, just like I've said many, many times about Airfield AA, I have a whole video on it talking about the ways that I would prefer for it to be reworked with a bit of timer and a bit of consistency. Instead of it being so RNG and luck based uh, like it is here, it is working in my favor just by chance uh, and it has killed someone. So whilst I have been able to repair, rearm and come back to the battlefield to spook this FW190, I am in a bit of a pickle here. Oh, it's, it's sort of down to luck more than down to me being good at the game or me playing with the mechanics correctly. It's sort of just a, a luck thing, and for me, I don't really like things that are luck-based or that are RNG-based. I want some certainty in this game, and some certainty would be to have some sort of timer. But I do explain that in my AAA video, and I will do my best to link that at the end of the video. So, this 190 here has been in a very unlucky situation. Maybe he's been duped by the spotting system, uh, but have a look at him here. He's kind of struggling to keep his plane up, so I thought... I'm going to save the ammo and not go for him, but he is still flying in a straight line, which means that he is still a threat, and he shot down the B-25, which is very, very upsetting for me because I really wanted him to stay alive. So what I'm going to do is try and avenge him as best as I can. There we go. There goes the wing, and bye-bye FW-190. Now, because I'm at low altitude and I'm convinced that someone is going to be climbing up in space, I need to get a little bit more altitude. I can't be climbing at 250 kilometers per hour because if I'm caught with my pants down at 250 kilometers per hour, that's game over. I am the last ally left on the team. There's not many tickets left, and if I can get the next three kills 
then I have the game in the bag. That would be seven kills and a victory if I can secure this. It is very, very high stakes. So what am I going to do? I'm going to head over towards the enemy's airfield. I don't want to camp it. I don't really want to be super close, but I think I do see someone taking off at that point, which means as soon as they get about five kilometers, I would consider that fair game. So I'm going to do a gentle climb, go off the web, just because I need to save the engine a little bit and consider my options here. I can sort of loiter around the airfield or I can wait for someone to appear and that's exactly what's happened here. I'm going to just check my six really quickly and then I'm going to dive. Now this might not seem like a very smart move because I'm giving up a lot of altitude but you have to remember that I'm picking up a lot of speed and I'm in a 1v1 here. I have to find an edge over my opponent and that edge in this case is uh, basically going to be a sort of psychological edge. The aim here is to uh, pretend or make the enemy think that I have less energy than I actually do and then go up into a vertical and force this guy to try and get some, uh, get some slow fighting. Once I've done that I can just pop out my flaps and I can sit around for until this BF109 comes back in and I come ever so close to shooting him down in a single shot but unfortunately only get the rudder and uh, I'm, I'm just desperately trying to nuke this guy to try and finish him off and to get onto the BF109. So I go for some brief shots here, some more brief shots, he's very very wobbly you can see and just as this BF109 comes in I have no other choice but to engage him. Going for a quick head on, a little bit dodgy and then I decide that I'm going to recommit to the head on because he's like gone away from the head on and that leaves me with just the LA5 to deal with who has no rudder and is very low on speed and energy. This could be it. I just need to land my 93 shots of ammunition, which should be a piece of cake, and boom. There we go, six kills. One kill left. And this is what the Spitfire is built for. It is built for these engagements where you have one versus ones, or you have enemies that are on low energy. But you need to get to that stage where your opponents have low energy. So make sure you grab your altitude, make sure you force your opponents down, make sure you have plenty of speed. If the turn fighter plays boom and zoom, he can play turn fighter later on in the match when his opponents cannot play boom and zoom. This is the kind of dogfighting, the kind of fights that the Spitfire needs to involve itself in. Otherwise, you're just going to be playing your opponent's game, and you're just going to be ending up on the losing side every single time. The times where I've died in the Spitfire 9C is are the times where I have tried to play turn fighter at high altitude, while the enemies have been able to play boom and zoom and energy fighting. So you need to make sure that every time you play this plane, treat it as a boom and zoomer until you get the altitude edge on your opponents. Then you treat it like a turn fighter. I see this mistake so often, and this is why the Spitfire is supposedly hard to play. It's hard to play because it doesn't have the ammunition capacity. You can see I've gotten three kills and I have barely any ammunition left. I am starting to get really low. And of course, the last opponent is a bomber. So I need that ammunition for bombers. I found this ammunition to be woefully ineffective against bombers. Uh, this might be me, this might be just the ping that I'm flying at, but I have not found the Hispanos to be much better than they were previously. It could just be that I'm running stealth belts because I'm a, I'm a stubborn bastard wanting to run stealth. But it could also be that I have high ping. It could also be that I am just shit with my ammunition. It could just be that maybe Gaijin hasn't fixed it, or there could be some other issues that uh, client side or server side or on my side, whatever, are just not coming through. Either way, you can't play this plane like it has infinite ammo. Either way, you only have 120 rounds per gun, which is not much. And whilst you can get those really intense shots where you just eliminate your opponent without any shred of, of them ever existing, you just sort of click and they're gone. These types of planes need you to be conservative with your ammunition. Fire in short bursts, only fire when your opponent is either slow or definitely in your crosshairs, and uh, there we go. You might just lose a six kill game. God, the Spitfire is one damn hell of a plane. But I tell you what, it's not foolproof, and the German bombers will sometimes get the better of you. So ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found something maybe insightful, maybe something fun. Let me know in the comments section below. Let me know what you think. And of course, we will uh, have some more videos coming soon. Wolf Thunder's been in a bit of a bit of weird downturn. So I've sort of 
held off a little bit, been a bit hesitant to make a bit of content just because it's not getting nearly as many views as it was maybe a month ago. So thank you guys for sticking with me. Thank you guys for continuously watching and feeding the algorithm. That really means a lot to me. And uh, I hope to maybe be on track in a little bit. I just want to let you guys know that uh, I have something on the way that involves... There we go. This. This is uh, potentially something very exciting. So do stay tuned. And of course, I will have more information on this as soon as I can bring it forward. But um, for those of you that, uh, you know, maybe taking a guess, let me know what you think might be happening in the comment section below. But uh, if you'd like to pick up some merch, this might be available very, very soon. Uh, but I do have some other stuff that is also available at the moment. If you would like to support the channel monetarily, you can always do that through Patreon and uh, Air Models. Air Models are brilliant, honestly. I have a couple of them sitting over that way. Um, and they're, they're really, really good, honestly. If you want some die-cast static models, then these guys are pretty much the best way to do it internationally. Um, I found that they have the same prices here in Australia, at least locally, uh, compared to physical shops. Um, that, that includes like shipping and the item itself. So for me, I found these pretty cheap. Uh, in other countries, maybe not so much, but uh, if you are from like Australia or if you're from a country where these types of models are quite expensive in uh, physical stores, this is actually not a bad option to support the channel as well as getting some pretty cool stuff. So thank you guys for doing that and thank you guys for feeding the algorithm. I sincerely appreciate it. So ladies and gentlemen, that'll be it for today. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care and I'll catch you next time.